Yeah. Hi, sorry about that. Hi, Hi there, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining How us. Are you? How are you? Good, I'm good. Um, so everybody, look, we'll start as it's 2 p.m. Um, so I'm just going to introduce you to Aileen and to Maria. So um, these ladies are our bank managers in the branch in um, UCC and it's Bank of Ireland who we're going to be talking about today. Um, so just a few notes to make. Um, so Bank of Ireland is our partner bank. So there are lots of other banks that are available. But today we're just going to talk about Bank of Ireland. Um, so all of the information that's discussed here is only relevant to Bank of Ireland. Um, the second thing I want to mention is that we don't advise about um, the processes of the banks, um, of the other banks. We just don't have anything to do with that. So um, you can choose whatever bank you want, but Bank of Ireland um, is our trusted partner. So look, I'll hand you over to um, Maria and Aileen and they will take you through what you need to know in order to set up a bank account with Bank of Ireland. Thanks, Thanks very much, Natalie. Uh, perfect. Sorry, <laughs> take We're your time. Sure everything uploaded. Yeah. A bit of a technical. Take picture. your time. Can you, can you see that, Natalie? I can see that. Yeah. Perfect. Fantastic. So, just to introduce ourselves again, I suppose, um, to everybody. First of all, welcome to the call. Um, we're delighted to to meet you virtually, and hopefully, we'll see you in person in a, a few weeks' time when you come to UCC. And we want to congratulate you on choosing UCC as well, um, as your university of choice, because I know you'll get a fantastic, um, enjoyable period of learning here. And as a former student at UCC myself, I know what a great college it is to be part of, and what a community there is there. So. I I've no doubt you're going to have a fantastic experience when you come over to us and you will enjoy Cork as well because I can highly recommend it. It's a great place to be and a great place to socialise. So hopefully you'll meet lots of friends uh, when you're actually over with us. So the purpose of the call today, and I'll introduce my colleague Aileen, who's actually the branch manager here in UCC. I'm based downtown in Cork City and the two of us collaborate on a lot of work around the college and around the campus. Um, and so it's kind of both of us that you may encounter over the next few months. So th the purpose, as we said, is an introduction to banking and how to deal with Bank of Ireland and how to open your account. Because I know that when you're moving to a different country, it's a huge concern to ensure that you actually have access to the funds that you need and access, I suppose, to day to day banking facilities um, within a short period of time when you actually land in the country. And this can be a worry and a concern to people and it can take a period of time for accounts to open. So we just want to try and make it as easy as possible for you so that by the time you actually land here with us and um, that you're actually up and running and ready to go. In a few minutes, Aileen is going to talk through the actual process itself in detail. But before that, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background about Bank of Ireland. And I promise I won't go on at length and bore you to death on this. But I think it's important um, to have a bit of a, a picture as to what we're about before you choose whichever bank that you want to partner with while you're here in Ireland. So as a bank, we were established since 1783 and we have, a, you know, a huge a diversified customer base providing products and services throughout Ireland, the UK, the US and in some countries in Europe um, to customers, you know, uh, through uh, both a traditional relationship driven retail and commercial philosophy. Um, and we have a clear and ca compelling strategy. Our branch footprint in Ireland is 169 branches nationally and we have 18 branches across Cork City and County, including the dedicated campus branch here in UCC. So when you actually arrive on campus, um, hopefully we get a chance to meet some of you and we can actually show you where we're based. But it's in the student centre, so it's very accessible and our team here will be looking forward to helping you with whatever needs you have. Um, just to give you a quick um, outline of our values, I suppose one of our key values that we like to ensure that we have um, ingrained, I suppose, in our, our, our colleagues in the branch is customer first. Um, our objective is to help our customers to thrive. So if we're focusing on customer first, everything that we do is for our customers. And we want to make sure that we meet your needs. We're empathetic. We listen to you and we make you feel valued because at the end of the day, if you are successful, we're successful as well. So that's our key, I suppose, um, focus point in every transaction we do. And that's why I suppose we're on here today to try and make it as easy as possible for you as the customer when you're coming into us here in Bank of Ireland. Um, 
our next, I suppose, area that we consider is better together. So this is about collaboration and this is a key value for us working together, both ourselves and the branches. And we work very closely with the digital team and the digital team will be actually opening a lot of the accounts for you and the non-resident team, which Aileen will go into in a minute. So it's through close collaboration with these, these teams that we can actually ensure that your account is open swiftly for you and that you get everything you need within a reasonable time frame. So that collaboration is really important for us. Our third value is take ownership. And it's really important for us that we ensure that we're owning the journey so that if you decide to open an account with Bank of Ireland and be a partner with us um, while you're in Ireland, that you know you have somebody who that you can go to and is trusted in order to ensure that anything you need done and done properly is done quickly, effectively, and meets your needs. So we instill that accountability in our team. And finally, um, the uh, the other value that we look at is being agile. And I suppose by that concerns really is being able to look after your needs in a quick and easy manner. And that's why I suppose during the COVID period in the last couple of years, we've moved from a paper based account opening process to an online account opening process to make it easy for people like yourselves who are coming into a new country, opening accounts um, and want to get up and running quickly without having to fill in lots of pages of paper. Now, from there, I suppose, to summarise, just give you a snapshot of the type of services we provide, um, many of which won't apply to yourselves because of the fact that you'll be here for short term, but you never know. You may fall in love with Cork and decide to stay. So just a snapshot of what we do is we provide mortgages, the current accounts for yourselves, the students and the second level students, businesses, etc. The loans, credit cards or insurance products. We offer protection in um, international payments if you're sending money home, etc. Savings accounts, pensions investments and that's only a small amount of the products and services that we actually um, provide to our customers on a daily basis and that they're available through us and through our digital app and through the website. So I suppose now we get to the thing that is actually the, the area that's uh, the purpose of the call specifically today and which is for ye and how ye can become customers of, uh, customers of Bank of Ireland and how ye can apply for a current account. And on this I'm going to hand over to Aileen my colleague based here in UCC branch, the feet on the ground, should I say, and um, to actually run through this with you. Hi, ahead, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thanks very much, Maria. So look, how do you apply uh, or how do you become a customer? You simply ap apply for a current account. Now, for some nations, that can be called a checking account, but it's basically an account that receives money and you can make payments out of you can set up direct debits on, standing orders on. And it's our entry level, I suppose, um, basic um, interaction with, with opening an account would be a current account is what you'd start with. So who can apply? At this moment in time, if you're not in Ireland, we would classify you as a non-resident. And then when you come to Ireland, you would be a resident. So at this moment in time, if you're in uh, Spain or if you're in Australia or any part of the world and you want to make an application, you will be applying, applying to our dedicated team on the non-resident side. I'm going to take you through that now. Um, there's two approaches that you can take. So right now, because you haven't come to Ireland yet, you can start with approach number one or you might wait. And when you get here, you might take approach number two. But you can proactively start becoming a customer today by these three steps. So before you come here, this is a really important email address and our dedicated team are on the other end of this email address and it's called new account opening at boi.com. I'll link it in the bottom end of the presentation also. Your application will be done completely over the phone. So you don't need to be in Ireland to make the application. You do it from your own, the comfort of your own home and it will be done on the phone line. You'll be asked to upload three things and I'll give you a guide as to what we will accept for proof of address, proof of identity, the source of wealth and the source of funds. Uh, for banking in Ireland, we are regulated. So these are actually legislative pieces that we need to get uh, in order to open an account. So we have no choice but to ask you for this information. Um, so based on what Maria has said prior, and being agile and, and being customer first, we've gone away and we've tried to simplify what we need. And I will present that to you now. So what is acceptable as a proof of identity? So um, 
a full photo identity must be captured for both non-resident and residents at account opening stage. So regardless of the nationality, we need this um, piece of document. So it's your passport. We can accept a driver's license if it's uh, UK or Ireland. Uh, we will ask you to do a selfie with the passport in hand. So this is something that we, we try to make easy. Uh, we are looking for two forms of ID um, for customers. And most people, particularly if you're a student, mightn't have the second piece of ID. So we've actually simplified the process to for you to take a selfie with your passport in your hand. And then you upload that and we will accept it. Um, but the one thing, though, your passport must be in date. So we can't accept one that's just expired or you're in the process of getting one. It has to be in date. Um, the acceptable proof of address. Now, this is something uh, Maria and I went away and, and got checked and simplified since we spoke to Natalie um, recently. And at this moment in time, when you're at home in your country and you haven't come to Ireland yet, and you might be thinking, how am I going to get a place to live? What am I going to do about uh, opening my bank account? We actually will accept a letter from UCC as address verification. And I've just outlined a few bullet points here that must be on the letter. So it must be on the UCC headed paper um, and it would include the following your name, your date of birth, your student ID number, your residential address abroad. So if you're in Australia at this moment in time, Spain, Germany, we will actually accept your uh, foreign address on the letter. It, the letter must state your academic year, your course name, your course duration, um, the mode of study, full time, part time. It must be date branded by UCC. It includes the commencement date of the course and it's signed by the registrar. We have a long established relationship with UCC, as Maria outlined. Um, so all of our colleagues in uh, the registrar's office in UCC know about this type of requirement. Um, so it would are very accommodating. So it's not going to be uh, the first time that they've heard of such um, a, requ um, a request. The third thing um, that we will require is the source of wealth and the source of funds. And this is a legislative, legislative, legislative piece that we have to have established with all customers before we can open an account. It's, it's not our choice. It's a piece of legislation we must comply with. So we will ask you um, for this. So if, for example, you're coming to Ireland and the source of the funds that's funding your course here is your parents. Uh, we will require um, a bank statement. Um, and if it's not in English, it must be translated and it must be a recent enough statement. You may be working in your own country at the moment. You may have your own personal bank account and you're funding it yourself or you're funding it with a scholarship or, or some form of other funding that you received. Um, we can accept that also. Uh, it's just proof of your source of wealth. So how are you going to look after yourself financially when you're in Ireland? And we just need to capture that. Um, so we just move on there to the journey. So what does the journey look like when you apply? Oops, so they are not forward there. But what does the journey look like? Right now, you can, or this evening, you can email newaccountopening at boi.com. You will actually receive a first email contact from Bank of Ireland. And what we're trying to do in this instance is help you. We're going to ask you to upload the proof of address. And if it's not right, we'll, we'll assist you and we'll say, actually, we need this piece. We need this. We need this. So we, we will help you in the first email to get your documents in order. You will then receive a second email and the second email will be arranging your, your time and day that is convenient for you to take a phone call from us. And we will start then. Um, point number four there to complete your application over the phone. Straight after you get the application uh, done with us, we're going to email you the terms and conditions of our banking, um, our data protection notice and all our compliance uh, pieces. You'll get those. You'll then get prompted to upload your proof of address, your proof of identity. It's not in there, but you may be asked for the source of wealth proof at that point also. Straight after that, if everything is processed and good to go uh, within three to five working days, you will actually receive a text and an email uh, with your IBAN details. Your IBAN will actually be live. It can now receive funds um, and it's, it's good to go. The next point here is important. So 
we can actually, um, we will be asking a question, our dedicated team will be asking a question during the application process around your expected time of arrival in Ireland. So I know from Natalie, some of you are coming here on, from the 31st onwards, some of you are coming a little bit later into September. So if we establish on the call that the timeline, the lead in time is, is too tight, what we will do um, to protect your data and, and card and pen, we will restrict um, sending the card and pen. So if you're in, say, Spain, we won't send the card and pen with your permission and we can organise it then when you come here uh, to Ireland instead. Um, some countries, the, the postal system isn't secure either, and we will let you know if we've, if we've experienced uh, any pushbacks on that. And again, it's all about making things easy for you and keep everything um, private and, and uh, protected. When everything is in order, we will contact you to help you set up your Banking 365. So Banking 365, it's 365 obviously stands for 365 days of the year. On your smartphone, our, our mobile app is very advanced and you can actually do a lot of, of your banking and self-service on the mobile app. So it makes you very independent and you can see how your account is performing. When you get to Ireland, then our top tip, and that's why we're here in UCC, um, when the app is up and running and you're here in Ireland and you've settled in, you can actually change your address um, to your Irish address on the mobile app. And our systems will pick up that you're now here, which will be fantastic. Um, at that point, we can arrange then for your card and pin to be posted to you. And that's very fast. And then you're totally independent and you can um, start using um, tap and pin and uh, all that good stuff around Cork City. You can then call into us here and we'll upgrade you to a student account. So the student account then gives you all the perks of being a student, non-fee paying account, and then you can enjoy um, student banking and services with us. The card actually looks like this here. So the card is, it's actually a sustainable, ethically uh, produced card. Um, it's grown from 84% corn. <laughs> so, um, and you'll figure out quite fast when you come to UCC that it's one of the top um, colleges and universities in the world, uh, ranking in the top 10 for uh, sustainability and all, you know, um, really putting a, a forward, taking the leadership role in terms of sustainability and Bank of Ireland do the same. Um, so then on our next piece here, we have When you when you come to Cork, so you might decide, you know what, I'll wait till I get over there and get my accommodation sorted. So when you come to Cork, you can take this approach. Um, you can go on to bankofireland.com website. And you can start your online application journey in six minutes. So you might think, geez, there's you're pushing a lot of it online. But as Maria said, we're trying to make things fast and quick. And we actually have a centre of, of or what it's called a digital uh, expertise um, activation centre and a, a very much a dedicated team ready to, I suppose, get your um, app or account open and live as fast as possible. So for this um, journey, uh, you must actually have access to a, a device camera to take a selfie during the application. So you can apply on your laptop, but you have to have an active camera working on that. Or if you do it on your phone, your phone needs to be a smartphone. So I'm just calling that out up front. Um, the Nokia normal phone won't, won't do it. Um, and you also must have an Irish or UK mobile number to apply. So a little bit different than what we outlined earlier. But when you come to Ireland, um, we're working off different technology and the um, mobile number must be be switched over to an Irish or a UK um, service provider in, or, in order to apply. Now, a lot of this stuff is, I suppose, brought to your attention at the airport and um, and it look to save you on charges and fees. It's probably a natural thing you would do anyway to, to switch to an Irish provider for your mobile when you come here. We'll ask you to upload your proof of Irish address on this journey. So you must actually have an Irish address to start the journey when you're in Ireland. So your previous foreign address will not work. This has to be your Irish address. So that's important to call out here. Your proof of identity will be the same, your passport 
and your source of wealth and source of funds uh, document will be the same. Um, but it, it's important there that the address must be Irish. We need to know where we're sending your card. So your card will go to an Irish address. The approval uh, quite fast. So the BOI text and email service is there. You'll get a status update. It, it, you won't have to do a lot of the chase thing yourself because we're quite active on the status update. Um, and also, if we get a document that is not what we're looking for, we will also give you a status update on that. So you won't be surprised if you if you um, you sorry, you won't be chasing us. We will be quite proactive letting you know what we need. So the timeline, if you apply when you're in Ireland, so we encourage the online portal because it's a dedicated site um, and it's very fast. So it's at, on our website under the third level student account. It takes six minutes in total for your application to be complete. We will request your documents to be uploaded. Within three to five working days, your IBAN will be live. If if we don't need any further information, all the documents were, were good. And we'll text you to let you know your account is ready to go. Your card and your PIN will be posted to your Cork address. And then we'll set up a uh, Banking 365 mobile app for you. So quite straightforward. And I suppose the perks. So <laughs> being a student, uh, why, what is in it for us and what do we uh, provide with you with? So. There'll be no fees for maintaining this account. Um, obviously, some of you are in different parts of the world, so there may be outside the EU zone um, different fees and charges applicable for certain transactions, but we've done our best to make concessions on those and to make them as cheap as possible for students. Um, we do mobile payments, so digital pay across Apple and Google. Uh, you can add your card to your smartphone. We have a digital wallet. You can start paying online in store with your smartphone. Um, Mobile banking, you can do a lot of self-service yourself You can change your address, you can manage your statements, you can transfer money to your friends, you can add or set up uh, standing orders for your utility bills, you might have a phone you want to, to pay monthly on, uh, you can set up a direct debit for Sky, anything that you need uh, while you're here, you can fully take charge of that with the type of account we propose for you. Um, you can control your card, so if you're moving and you kind of think, where should I put my card or whatever, you can freeze it, you can unfreeze it in the app, you can view your PIN because obviously you'll have a lot going on, you might forget the PIN. It'll actually be captured inside the mobile app for you. You can order a replacement card, it'll be out to you quite fast. We have some new additions to the app so you can get uh, insights into your spending. You can set goals as to what you'd like to save for it, those type of things. Um, what, what we're actually a leader on is a foreign currency as well. So um, you can make foreign uh, currency payments. You can send money to family and friends. You can pay for something overseas. Um, and so, look, there's lots, lots of benefits there for you. And just driving on there, we give you instant access to um, savings accounts as well. So it's not, sometimes it's not all about spending. You might want to save and earn a bit of interest while you're here on your savings. Um, as Maria mentioned earlier, we have an extensive ATM and branch network. So we're across Ireland. So no matter where you go, you'll find a Bank of Ireland. Uh, we're really embedded in our communities. Um, when you open a, a current account with Bank of Ireland, as I said, it's your entry step account. Um, based on how long you're here and obviously subject to specific lending criteria, you 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 do open, have access to student lending offerings as well. We have a student credit card. We have um, uh, two specific loans which are geared around um, being a student and uh, furthering your education. Uh, so we also uh, look, have made a link here, access to our dedicated section on the website. It was actually only in this this morning and there's some really great tips in there on budgeting and, you know, I suppose getting to know your locality, we have a lot of, um, I suppose, initiatives around upcycling and all of that, um, that, you know, people are interested in now and how to be sustainable and how to manage, I suppose, when you're in a new country and being on your own. So there's lots of um, good content going there and look, you have full access to that. So just to leave you on this note, our national SAR code for UCC branch is 909695. Uh, and why is this important? So on your application, you may be asked uh, over the phone or you will certainly be asked when you're doing the online journey, where would you like your account to be? And if your account is uh, under this SAR code 909695, then it will be in here uh, under the UCC uh, umbrella. 
And it's very easy for us to go in and find um, your account and, and, and advise you if there's any queries on it. I've also put in here links to our personal banking student uh, section for content. And I'm going to leave you then with two really important links here. The first one is right now you're not in Ireland and you want to start the process today. New account opening BOI.com is a key one there for you. And then when you come to Ireland or you're in Ireland and you want to make an application, uh, your first application when you come here, we have the digital application centre in there as well as a, as a link for you to, to use. So we're going to probably open up for any questions. Um, and Aileen, just before we go on to that, actually, Natalie has shared with me um, a document that is produced by the UCC, we'll say, website, um, which actually covers all of the, the areas that was mentioned there with regard to, you know, it being an, a letter with, on UCC headed paper with all the different things around, around your course and your student number, etc. So um, that actually, you know, will you can click on it. I need an attendance letter. Um, when you're going through your registration process and that um, should suffice for account opening. So we can maybe, um, Natalie, you've sent on a really good kind of uh, template there which outlines how to access that and where to find it as you go through the process. So perhaps we can link this into the chat or something so that everybody yeah. could actually um, access that at a later point should they wish to do so. So uh, that should cover everything. Perfect. Yeah, I've popped it into the link uh, or into the chat. Sorry. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. That was really informative. And I just want to, you know, really encourage our students to ask questions now because um, I'm not an expert on banking. Um, Aileen and Maria are. So please, now is the time to ask any questions. Um, so you can raise your hand or you can pop a message into the chat. Um, so like I said, now is the now is the time. So I might just run through a couple of comments in the chat. Um, yep, the reason sure. being, I I know when we record um, all of these workshops, students can't actually see the chat, unfortunately, for some reason. Yeah. So they won't be able to see the questions and answers. So I'll just run through them. Yes, yeah, um, sure. So the first thing I just popped into the chat is just the link to where you can find the banking information. So um, obviously um, I, I can't um, show you where it is, but it's on our UCC information page. It's our student hub page. All you have to do is type in UCC Banking International and it will bring you bring you to our page. Um, so that's where all of this information is sitting um, and it's been approved and sanctioned by Bank of Ireland. So everything is accurate. So the second thing that we mentioned is that for proof of address, um, you can access something called a letter of attendance. So it's an auto generated letter. So we um, we used to write letters, but obviously as our international student um, headcount increased, we, we were writing thousands and thousands of letters and we just don't have capacity. So um, the team came up with this auto generated letter of attendance, um, like Maria mentioned. So again, everything is very accessible on the website you just have to Google UCC letter of attendance and it'll show you how to download it. So the next question that came in was from Hussein. Very valid question. So it said, Natalie, we need a UCC student email to get this letter of attendance. Is that correct? And that is right. So um, right now, none of our students are registered. Mm -hmm. So they've all been accepted and offered a place. Um, and right now, um, a lot of students are panicking because they've no student email address, no student number. So that is coming. So the teams, the you, the undergrad team, postgrad team will send out a letter, uh, an email, which will invite you to register within the next week or two. So that will give you access to your UCC email address, um, access to the UCC student portal. And then once you're registered, you can pick your modules and do all of these things like download your letter of attendance. So the next question just came in from Pearl and it said, is the proof of address the same as the letter of attendance? So, yes, it, it is the same thing. Um, again, really good question because we use the terms interchangeably, but yeah, yeah, we, exactly. we forget that they might not know what it means. Yeah, um, so I've just put in an explanation because it was a good question. Um, 
so I've just explained everything about you first you register, then you get access to your portal where you can download the letter. Um, and just for um, these are for students who were non EU, so non EU passport holders, that letter will not suffice for immigration. So there's a separate process. They have to register to get permission to reside and to study. Um, but that letter will not be sufficient. It has to be um, a letter um, that's a bit more formalized, a bit more formal so that is that is on our um, immigration page so I won't go into it um, and the other thing I want to say as well is that you mentioned that um, so once they're here and they want to apply for a bank account it has to be their Irish address so again, UCC cannot write letters um, confirming address. Um, so you'll like, what will you accept from the students as proof of address? Like how do those letters need to look? So like a lease if, agreement? When, when when they come here, Natalie, um, they can update their address. If they have the if, if if they, already. Yeah, so they can update their address on the portal, your portal, and then they obviously can print a new letter. Would, would it be right to say that? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. That that's, that yeah. sounds yeah. really easy. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Um, so the next question is from Andrilla. As proof of funds, can we show the education loan sanctioned letter? Um, yes, you yeah. can. If it's not in English, we just want to understand what it is. Just get it translated. Okay, that's perfect. So but it yeah. must be translated. Brilliant. It must be translated, and it must be like an, an official translator. You know what I mean? It's it's it's. Has you to know, be you can't bring in your friend. You can't bring in your friend to tell me what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it Perfect. So it has to be notarized and stamped yeah, and sealed. Correct. Perfect. So another question here from Barb. Um, is there a minimum account? Sorry, is there a minimum amount to open an account? Great question. Uh, you can start with zero. Yeah. <laughs> For no, you. There's no need. Yeah. 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 Which most yeah. students will come in with. Yeah. <laughs> Just we were all enough. there. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, so the next question as well from Barb, what specifics need to be on proof of funds? Okay, great question. So if it's a scholarship, then we'll know that you've attained X amount in value towards your education and that can be translated if it's not in, in English. Um, on If it's a parent's bank statement, then it would need to show that it's in credit of funds. So it has to be an official bank statement that's recent and it has to be in official um it has to be an official document that shows that it's in credit of funds that you know yeah so say for example they're giving you ten thousand we'll just pick a number from the air um ten thousand to cover your education and maybe set up costs and accommodation or whatever so um we need a bank statement from bank of canada you know within the last three months with showing the balance is is there you know what I mean so that it's you know that it's not a balance of 2100 or something along those lines you need to, to be or if they've transferred the money to you already to get going into your own bank account so we'd need a copy of your statement with the money in there and a copy of their statement showing the money going from you know from there that it was there and that it's now transferred to yourself so look sometimes that can be problematic and can take a little bit longer but most of the time it's straightforward enough we don't need it in all cases but we can you know we can require it so sometimes it's better to be prepared yeah. rather than to encounter a problem so that you don't have delays so it's um it's something that's useful to have um should you require it and you know most people's bank statements are online nowadays so it should be easy enough for you know the parents to to get a bank statement and send a pdf um copy across or to get it branded in their own branch and and send a, a scan any a copy of that to us um so but if there's any roadblocks along the way like that you know you have Aileen and myself here in the team you can contact us yeah. directly. Yeah. So if you are encountering a problem, let us know and we'll actually then follow up with the, our non-resident team if you're opening it abroad or if you're actually here and going through the journey and doing it when you get here, we'll actually make contact with the various teams to make sure that we can get you out of the situation sure. if you're stuck. Yeah. So don't worry about problems that will arise. We'll do our very best to make sure that we can get around them for you. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. So you will take an online banking statement 
Um, and the other question is, does it have to be converted to euro? So say it's in, you know, Japanese no. yen or something. No. no. And actually, to be honest, if you are sending funds across into uh, an account, so say, for example, you go through the non-resident journey and you open your account when you're in Japan and um, your account is open here in Ireland and you get your IBAN and your parents want to send you the money, you're better off actually sending it in Japanese yen. Um, to, sorry, now I've got that wrong. You're uh, they, <laughs> yes. Contact us in advance. Contact us in advance. in advance about that because we actually have a global markets office that converts currencies and actually our rates are better than anyone else in the world with regards to that to ensure that you actually get a good rate so that you get more euros for your Japanese yen or your US dollar or Canadian or whatever. Yeah. So do contact us if that's going to happen, that your parents are sending money over to an account that you may have opened here with us and we can actually get a rate booked for you if you wish to do so. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, so just another question from Lauren. I think I may have missed this in the presentation, but how long generally will it take to apply and create a bank account once in Ireland? Yeah, so when you're when you're here and it depends, obviously, if you come down to, to us, um, we start the online process. The online process is six minutes. That's the fastest bit. Right. The next piece then, and this is a great question because we're going to contact you to say, please upload your proof of identity, your passport, which are your proof of address, your source of wealth that's been asked for. And some people don't check their junk mail. So you might have your notifications turned off or your junk mail might be catching stuff and you don't send us back the stuff, then that's going to add a delay. But with the, if if everything get, comes in the same day that you make the application and we're processing um, three to five working days is once everything is happy path, we call it, and we're not missing anything or, you know, the, the proof of address is correct, the, the passport is in date, all the stuff, the compliance pieces that we have to check, three to five working days, your IBAN will be issued to you by a text message and email. So you will be up and running on your account. Now, you won't have the practical pieces like the card and the pin just yet. They're probably a week later. So all in all, you're looking at maybe two weeks end to end and you have everything up and running. That's really fast. And that's why we're doing this now pre arrival, because students yeah, yeah. need to get their you know bits and pieces in order and they do have a lot to organise. So this yeah, is to yeah, help absolutely. them to get yeah. it done fast. Yeah. Um, so just another question from Daksha. How much funds do we have to show? Is it 10,000 euros that we have shown for visa? Well, no. no. Yeah, sorry. No. <laughs> um, so, so we used that number earlier just as an example, but you can open a bank account with Bank of Ireland with zero in it. You can you no, don't need to give us anything. Um, we, we want to help you. We want to have you to have a bank account so you can start with zero. I suppose what we're saying about the proof of funds is that it's a legislative piece that we need to comply with. So we need to, you need to help us understand how the account is going to be operated. So who's going to be putting money into your account? And you would be saying, oh, it's my mom, it's my dad, or I'm getting a scholarship. This is what I'm expecting to come in. This is going to keep me going during my studies. And once we understand how your account is going to look, then we are OK with that. But we have to ask the question because it is a regulatory question we have to ans answer um, for audit, you know. So it, I suppose at the end of the day, it depends like um, on this person's circumstances. So if a person is coming over here and they're getting um, some form of a grant or scholarship and that grant or scholarship is, we'll say, 5,000 euros, um, you know, the source of wealth will be to to demonstrate that you've that 5,000 euros coming in and that's your source of funds for stroke source of wealth. The two things are the same thing. It's just is... The purpose of this is to get an understanding, as Aileen said, as to how the bank account will operate um, so that if in the morning 200,000 arrived into the account, you know, that, that would flag as a, why is 200,000 arriving into this account when we were only expecting five or 6,000 to, to arrive into the account? So we have to prove that um, that it's operating the way that we said it would operate. So if Rather, it won't get into the technicalities of it, really, because, you know, it, it, it's it's a bit uh, dull and boring, but essential all the same. Um, if your parents are going to be giving you money and sending you money over in order for you to get up and running and pay for your accommodation, etc., 
it will be, you know, the amount of money they anticipate sending over. So they may, if they anticipate sending over three thousand euros or ten thousand euros or whatever, um, it's it's you know proof of that. And obviously, from what one of the um, participants said there, there is a, a ten thousand immigration, you know, evidence required. So if you're having to provide that for immigration, you know, you could that we could utilize that as well. That would duplicate there, you know, that that um. That amount, but it needn't be that amount. I don't want anyone to think that they have to be getting ten thousand euros, you know, into their account in order to open one. You don't actually need any money to open a bank account with us at all. But um, we just need to see how you're going to manage and operate uh, while you're here. You know, if you're not working, so you know, some people will be working and they may have a job secured. That's a different matter. Your source of funds will be from your wages. You know, but as I said, if there's any individual roadblocks here. Just contact us and we'll escalate it for you and get it sorted um, and get an understanding of what the problem is, if there is a problem. Yeah. So don't worry, please, because we will sort it for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And how did they contact you? Um, are, is there an email address or? Yeah, yeah. It's it's actually on the slides. Will the slides be Perfect. made available? Next to, yeah, we're both on it. Yeah. Um, but obviously I'm Perfect. here every day. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're in the branch here. Um, I'm not here every day. Sometimes I'm down in, in uh, the South Mal branch in town. Um, but, um, you know, our email address is there as well. And we have colleagues both here in the branch and we also have a bank of colleagues down in South Mal um, that can support as well if there's a, a large volume of queries or whatever. So, you know, don't be worried about contacting us if there's something unique or, or you know, out of order that you're concerned about. Do contact us yeah. because we're here to take those those queries and we'll do our very, very best to get you sorted and, and get up and running, yeah. you know. So great, thank you. Um, so I have a question from Ragav. Um, Nandika, I'm not sure who Nandika is, has already signed a copy of a lease. I think they mean with Nido uh, Brogue, maybe. Um, will the lease copy suffice to open an account before we come to Ireland? So as proof of address, I presume. Might be better off opening it in their current address and uh, abroad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it they're becoming more problematic um, because some of the leases that we're seeing are not from official agencies and they might be just a letter from a landlord who uh, has a little apartment or a granny flat off the house and they've written something and we can't accept that because it doesn't comply with the legislative piece. So to be very specific, we'd have to see the document. But as Maria said right now, because um, at Fair Place, you're being very proactive and um, you could actually um, start the non-resident process um, using the, the new account opening team this evening. And you could actually, because your first question from that dedicated team is to show that proof of address and they'll have a look and, and see and guide you. Yeah, so just to be clear, when you're opening an account and you're abroad in your own home country, the proof of address, uh, address that you're providing there is the proof of the address you live in in your home country. Your home so country, yeah. that is a bank statement from your home country or, um, you know, a utility bill or something along those lines from your home country. And that's supported then by the letter or the attendance letter um, from UCC as well. Yeah, and highly likely you'll have that because you wouldn't have been able to secure a tenancy here without your bank statements from your own country. So it's a very, I suppose, we're, when we met Natalie, as was last week and or the week before, what we took away, Marie and I, was we, we gave you the tips today on how to short circuit and get things moving very slick and easy for yourself. So I suppose there are a number of ways to get to a destination, but we've given you the, the easy ones today. And, and that's what we would guide you towards. And as Maria said, if you wanted to start it from the home, place now uh it would save you a lot of bother you know for yeah you. i think like i mean if you can like we have a number of of uh, customers recently now have come over from south africa and they had their accounts up and running with the non-resident team so it's that email non-resident accounts at boi.com so they had their accounts open and up and running prior to coming to ireland and then it was just a matter of them changing their address when they arrived here and it just makes it that little bit easier for the customer because like if you by the time you get a utility bill in your new rental apartment or whatever um, it can be a month or two months or whatever, or get a letter to that effect. So that can delay things, um, you know, so if possible, and if it's a, an option for you, if you can open it 
why, why you're at home in your home country now, do get underway with that. So it's your own identity and, and your address verification from where you are right now. And the UCC letter then will support that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other thing what we will say in, uh, um, is that to bear in mind as well that your own bank accounts will actually work, you know, when you come over here first as well. So your bank cards, ATM cards, all that type of thing, your PIN numbers, they will still work in our ATM machines. Yeah. The only thing that might occur would be that you might um, incur bank charges from your own bank for using a card abroad. So that's why it's best to get a, a, a an account open in a bank in Ireland. It's just to avoid those charges. Um, and they vary from bank to bank, like we wouldn't have any line of sight on what they would be. But I know, for example, when I go to the UK and if I tap my card in a shop to buy something, I'm charged a percentage of that. So I might spend two euros in a shop in the UK and I could be charged 16 cents for having used my card abroad. So that's just an example of what can happen if you're coming from Canada, Japan or whatever, and you're using your own bank cards in another country, you can be charged. So while it's a handy, I suppose, backup plan for the first few weeks, um, I, you know, until you get your yourself fully up and running, the, the, the thing to do really is to get your Bank of Ireland account uh, or your bank account in general, whichever bank you to decide to choose, to get it open as fast as possible to enable you to actually be fully self-sufficient with a euro bank account um, so that you don't have to rely on your old cards. But you won't be stuck. Just bring your existing cards with you and, um, you know, have money in that account as well so that you're you're ready to, to you know, to operate without um, having your new account open if it's not open yet. Yeah, no, that's really good advice. And I just want to echo that, you know, we would encourage you to start the process with banking now because, um, you know, it will impact your immigration if you're non-visa requiring. Um, there's there's a long um, waiting list to get an appointment is between six and nine weeks. And a lot of people get stuck at the point where they're trying to show proof of address. Whereas if you have a bank statement, an Irish bank yeah. statement, that will suffice as proof of funds and proof of address. So um, yeah. definitely get going on this now while you've got a bit of time you know yeah um, definitely so the next question is from barb are funds added to the account bring certified check or is it all digital no the, a good plan a point there and i'm glad you raised that question if you bring a, a certified check we'd call that a bank draft here actually um i would recommend sending it digitally the reason is if we get a certified check or a bank draft or any of those forms of, of um, money, um, we actually have to send it for what's called collection. And what collection entails is us sending that um, a piece of value, the check, off to the bank that issued it. And that can take between six and 10 weeks for it to come back cleared. It goes through a very long clearing process and the money doesn't actually come into your account until it's fully cleared. So it's uh, anything paper based is not a good idea. Sending money digitally is the way to go. It appears in your account within, depending on, you know, whether you send it express or normal, you know, three days or 24 hours, depending on how, how um, quickly you sent it. So avoid paper <laughs> or a check from mom and dad. Avoid that if at all possible, because it could be um, a, a number of weeks and it will be a number of weeks before actually you get the funds. So try and stay away from those. And that's, that's actually a great point, because if you don't have your card in pin yet, but funds have been lodged into your live Bank of yes. Ireland IBAN, you can actually come to any of the cash branches and get some cash out. Yeah. So you're never stuck. You yeah. Know. And what would they need to show? Just proof of ID or something? Yeah. Yeah. Proof yeah. of ID. Okay. And we'll find the account on the system and we'll be able to give you cash. Yeah. That's brilliant. OK. Yeah. 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 So another question. How difficult is it to obtain an Irish mobile number? I was actually talking to somebody about this today and apparently when you're coming through the airport, they're all over you. So all the brands <laughs> want to, <laughs> they know you're coming on a long haul flight and they want to recruit to to open um, a new mobile account. It's not expensive is my understanding of it. You can go on a pay as you go so you can tap up and pay monthly or weekly or whenever the cash runs out on it. Or you can go into a contract. Highly likely none of you on the call will be going into a contract until you have maybe a proof of address set up for Ireland. So you, you're, you're probably going to pay as you go is what we call it. Um, so very easy is, is the answer is 
And the main providers would be Vodafone um, and three. Meteor. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, Tesco Mobile as well. Yeah. But Vodafone would be one of the biggest ones, really. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just to say we have, um, well, usually it's like you said, we get um, approached by the different providers. So we do have a batch. Um, I think there might be maybe 100 SIM cards um, and they've got five euro preloaded on it. Oh, and, and, great. <laughs> yeah, so in the international office, you're more than welcome to come down and just take one. Um, so it's first come, first served. And hopefully we might get a few more. Um, and that's pay as you go. So there's no contract. There's no kind Brilliant. of obligation yeah. to stay with them. Um, yeah. So just another question from Barb. I think you answered it, but just I'll just read it out anyway. Um, how are funds brought or added to the account? So a number of ways. So if you don't have your card and PIN just yet, you can get an internet or an EFT. We call it electronic funds transfer into the account. Um, and then you can come to whilst you don't have your card and PIN, you can come to any uh, branch and we can give you value based on what's in the account. Um, Secondly, um, you can your bring friend, cash. You can bring cash yeah. With you. Yeah, yeah, you can launch it in. Um, now, um, if you are coming from the US, um, just to be aware, a hundred dollar bills um, are something that the US government have sent out a restriction on, in that they want all hundred dollar bills sent for collection. Um, because of the amount of fraudulent US dollar bills that there are in existence. So as a result of that, um, again, now it's like the check going for collection. If they have to be sent off to a specific place whereby they're checked thoroughly um, and that takes a period of time. So if you are coming to Ireland from the US, don't bring hundred dollar bills. Um, there's also restrictions um, on entry into the country as well with a certain level of cash. So that would be av available on the um, Department of Foreign Affairs website as well, um, you know, with regard to how much money you can bring in. So I wouldn't recommend bringing large volumes of cash into the country. Apart from anything else, you could lose it or it could be stolen. So it's not recommended. But if you do have, you know, a small amount of cash with you and you want to lodge it to your account, we have uh, devices um, both inside and outside the branch that you can lodge using a card and pin and you lodge your money in using the device or you can go to a cashier service or a teller service might be known as in other countries and you actually go into the branch and you approach the cashier and they will take any funds from you and lodge it into your account. So the mechanisms really are electronic funds payments, cash or checks. And as we've said, with regards to the checks, you know, it's not a great idea because of the time it takes to go through that uh, collection and clearing process. It takes a huge length of time and you won't have funds. Thank you. And and we have had students come to Cork with lots of cash on them and they've come to the international office and asked us to hold it for them. We can't do that. <laughs> so please don't no. bring cash. <laughs> no, it's not a good idea. It's, it's just, just too no. dangerous, really, to be honest. And yeah, I mean, you know, we have to do it. The other thing is you've currency exchanges going on and all that. Um, and it's just not a recommended at all, really. You know, if we can go cashless, that's the way we're trying to go these days, using yeah. cards and, and apps Safe and your Apple Watch or your whatever, Google Watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just another question from um, Hossein. Do you have the foreign conversion rates on your website somewhere? Yeah, we do. Um, so if you go into www.bankofireland.com, um, and you could, there's a search button, you can put in foreign exchange and it will actually, there's a calculator and everything there. You can put in, I have a thousand US dollars and it'll tell you how much that's worth in euro and it, it gives you the breakdown. The rates change on a daily basis, so they're <laughs> updated daily. Um, and, you know, the like if if there's somebody sending funds over, you know, that are very substantial, we also have a team there that will watch the rates for you. We put you on what's called an in, in indic indication board. And if you have a target rate, you want to achieve a rate of exchange, they call you when that uh, rate is actually achieved, whether it moves up or down and you can do the transfer then. But that would be for over 70,000. So it wouldn't apply to a lot of people here now. But generally speaking, yes, the rates are available on the group website. Um, and if there's any queries around rates that for some reason you don't see there, uh, let us know and we'll contact you. But all the rates should be available on the group website. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, another question from Andrilla. Could you please repeat what should be the format for proof of address? 
Um, yes. Will we go back to, will I open the slide up there maybe? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we, I can see questions right now, so that's perfect. Sure, I'll go back to the slide on it there. And if anyone, I, I said we will have this available, but if anyone wants to take a picture of it or just. Well, they know, can to... access the recording there. and it'll show um, it'll show the slides. And I think the reason students are asking is, that, you know, a lot of students, they, they don't mm. have utility bills. They're at home with parents. Um, yeah. Hopefully they yeah. might have a bank account, but if they don't, they this is why they could be stuck, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So here on this, so um, I suppose we, we kind of took it from the point of view that maybe everybody was registered with UCC, but I, I understand from the call not everybody's registered yet, Natalie. So um, Maria's point there where you can actually use your um, parents' um, bank statement if you don't have one or utility bill in your own home address at this point in time, so your country address, we can accept that. But as I said, if it's in a foreign language, you just need to translate it. But to keep things simple today, we put up this one for the um, UCC letter. So the UCC letter, as I said there, we will accept the verification as follows. So you can see yeah. it on the screen. And there. like, I mean, that is aligned, I suppose, with what you shared, Natalie, um, which I just had a quick look at, which prints out from the, the you know, the portal, mm -hmm. um, which covers all of those key areas, you know. Um, but like if you do have a bank account or a, a mobile phone contract, for example, that would be another thing that we could use. We're not using those anymore now, aren't we? No, the mobile phone is gone. Yeah. But the bank account is there. Yeah. 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 And if it is a case that we you, you're, you're using your parents um, to um, as, as your proof of address, uh, we can accept the bank statement. But again, it needs to be translated if it's not in English. Uh, it needs to be recent. It needs to have your address, your name, or so your parents' name, um, and we will accept it. Okay. Is that answering the question? Um, it's clear for me anyway, but um, sure. I yeah, we'll keep going through, and it might pop up again. Yeah. Um, sure. Sorry. So just a question now from. Um, Lam, when we register online, do we need an Irish phone number? Could we add later when we arrive to Ireland? Yeah, so I'm actually going to put back up the original screen for approach one. So, so approach one is non-resident. So this is where you're in your home country and you want to open the account right now. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you know, you're using your non-resident, yeah. your home country's address. You're using everything to do with your home country, including your home country current mobile number. Yeah. And then when you get here and the uh, you get your uh, um, Irish mobile number, we can then change that mobile number for you. But uh, just to clarify here, so if you apply in your home country, you're using your home mobile that you have at this moment in time. So if you're in Spain, you're using your Spanish mobile number and we can go ahead and open the account. We are using different technology to open using the Spanish or the international uh, phone numbers. When you get to Ireland, it's a bit different. We're using a different piece of technology again that's ring fenced between UK and Ireland. And that is why if you apply when you're in Ireland, you have to have an Irish mobile or UK mobile number. So actually, it really is easier at mm -hmm. this point in time, you know, for you when you're in your home country to actually get this account open before you arrive here at all. Yeah, it is the it is the easiest because you already have your um your mobile from your current country that you're in. You are likely to have proof of address because, you know, you should probably have a bank statement with your address on it. Um, most people do have bank accounts um, for the where you are living right now. And um, you'll have your obviously you have your passport because you're going to be traveling. So it is actually a lot easier for you mm -hmm. to open your account through the non-resident uh, process before you come to Cork. Once you come to Cork, you do have to have that Irish no you do. number, as you do. said. You do. And we go down the road of needing proof of address for where you're living Correct. Then at that point. So it's, it's, you know, from what we're hearing from the non-resident team, and Aileen has spent a considerable amount of time 
chatting with them in the last two weeks to make sure that we have this right for you. Um, it, they would prefer if you actually opened it before you arrived in Cork at all. Sure. But when you do arrive, we will support you in the journey if you haven't actually um, opened it at that point, if if you just don't get to it or something comes up or whatever. Yeah. Don't worry if you arrive in Cork and you don't have your bank account open, we will support you to get it open. But if you have time, uh, let's start the process, yeah. you know, before you actually arrive in Cork so that you don't have to have that, you know, Irish number before you can get started. Correct. Yeah. So because I hope that makes sense. The, 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 the clarity around the two you processes, can use your current number, you can use your current number uh, in your home country if you start it now when you come to Cork, because the bank is different technology operates using UK and Ireland um, mobile technology when you open it in this country. We will pick up, we have um, near field, uh, and, you know, the near field technology, which allows you to do tap and pin. Mm. You know, you can tap and go on with your phone and stuff. So we're using a different piece of technology and that's why you have to have an Irish or UK number. So it's just a key so, difference. So, so the key message again is try to get this um, process started now before you come, because when you get here, you will you might not have accommodation yet. You have to start yeah. immigration if you're non-EU. You need to figure out timetables, make friends. It's, it can be overwhelming. So the more yeah. you can do now, the better is the, the key message, I think. Yeah. Um, and can I just come in there, Natalie, with just another course. key point is that um, if your journey to Ireland is imminent, so you're on your you're on route. So you're you're kind of thinking, gosh, in the next two weeks, I'm going to be bags packed in Cork Airport. So should I start the process tonight or tomorrow or whatever? We can withhold your card and pin. So it won't be going to your other, you know, your, you know, your other country. You won't be passing it in the night. We would hold it until you're settled here. So your IBAN is live and all the other little nuances that you need with your card and pain and all that we'll do that when you're here you know so um you don't need to be at home to to collect the card or anything you know yeah. that's no that's a really good point because we do have a group of um, us students coming and they're coming this week next week it's a small group but they might yeah. be watching this so that's really good advice sure. yeah um so just another question from barb um what is the best way to do the eft's yeah, so if you're sending funds, first of all, you will need to have um, the IBAN, um, which is the international bank account number. That's what IBAN stands for. Um, and the BIC, which is, um, you know, we can we can share. They will be shared with you when when you actually your account is up and running. OK, so um, you will be you need to go into your local bank or perhaps you can do it online. It depends on whatever bank you currently bank with or who, who your parents currently bank with. They'll either be able to do an online transaction or they'll actually um, have to go into the bank. They complete the documentation and what the information that you'll need is the name and address of the bank. So it'll be Bank of Ireland, UCC, Cork um, and you'll need your IBAN number, the name of the beneficiary. So the beneficiary is the person who owns the account, which is yourself. Um, so that's all the detail you need, really. So that is done at the other end, as in the end that you're in right now, your home country. Uh, um, whoever is sending the money to you or if you're sending it to yourself, once you have your IBAN number, you can actually do a transaction and send those funds over. Um, again, if there's any queries on that, you have our emails and we can actually um, just clarify it with you if you if you are you know a bit concerned or whatever. But um, until you get your IBAN number, you can't actually send any funds over because there is nowhere for it to go. So mm -hmm. it is uh, when your account is open um, and you get the IBAN number confirming that it's open, that's the point that you can actually send money to your account at that stage. That's Hopefully brilliant. that clarifies a barb. I hope so anyway. Will you just go back to the slide that shows your uh, contact details? Because I know they'll be yeah, asking sure. me. It'll save me a couple of hundred emails, sure. hopefully. Absolutely. Um, there so it's just us there now. Um, thank you so much. I'll just read out the next question. Um, Sorry, well, apologies. I go the wrong oh, direction. Take your time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's one. brilliant yeah, yeah that one yeah, yeah. So, perfect thank yeah. you so much exactly. um 
So there's just another question there from Lam. It's a good question, actually. Um, if I send bank statement of my mother's savings, do I need to provide evidence to show she is my mother? No, yeah. no. Yeah, that's no. fine. Yeah. <laughs> And I know people have different names, you know, yeah. like as in, you know, th then that might be where that question came from, because mm -hmm. uh, I know like my children actually have a different name to the name I normally use. So I can see where yeah. that question comes from. Yeah. But and that's it's the fine. same in Spain, yeah. it's the same in Spain and Italy. Um, they don't they don't use the mother's name. It's the father's name. So a really yeah. good question. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, very good question. Um, so the next one is from Andrilla. Will a passport be acceptable as the current proof of address? No, no, because your passport, well, I know the European passports don't have address on it. So your passport is proof of your identity. It proves who you are. Um, proof of address is um, a, a bank statement generally. Um, we're, we're saying that, you know, the bank statement in the country that you're in right now um, or um, the letter from yeah. the, the, the letter, letter that issues from the portal. Yeah. It, yeah. it can't be used for two functions. It can only be used Right. or your proof of identity. In Ireland, we have, you know, the, path, the driver's license have our address on them, but mm. it's, it's, it's actually irrelevant. We can't use it as proof of address either. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so we're almost there and now we just have two more questions. Um, actually, sorry, one from Daksha. After mailing new account opening, can we upload our parents bank statements and home address electricity bills or something as proof of address? I'm sorry this question is recurring, but just wanted a clear understanding. Yeah, so that's a great question again. So um, and we're all here to learn. So when you get um through to the when you send your email you will get a first contact email back from the bank of ireland dedicated team and they're going to be asking for this document these documents anyway because they want to help and guide and they want to ensure that before you start the application process with them the documents are correct so you will get the email and they will ask you to upload those documents and then they will be checked yeah and they should be like those very ones. fast yeah yeah exactly. very fast like what he outlined there um, is, yeah. is adequate. It's yeah. adequate. So yeah. the, the, the parents' uh, bank statement um, as, as proof of address, once they're uploaded, they'll be checked and then they'll come back and they'll check everything to do with the date, is it in date, all of that stuff. And um, then you progress if, if the dedicated team are happy this document is sufficient. Again, if there is any specific questions and you're not sure on these, do contact us and we can contact the team directly, the yeah. um, non-resident team, if you have concerns or if you get um, an email back from the non-resident team stating that something isn't um, appropriate or whatever, um, do contact us and yeah. we'll follow it up for you. Yeah. Um, another question, can students be asked for documents that are not listed, that we didn't go through? They, can they be asked for additional documents? No, generally okay. not. Generally not. Um, but, uh, if, like it's it's a, the identification like under the legislation is identification and proof of address. And then the purpose of the account, um, the source of the purpose of the account is where is the money coming from? And how did it build up, basically? So that's the source of funds and source yeah. of wealth. Yeah, and they're generally all the documents and um, that can be requested very occasionally. They might look for something else, but it's very occasionally. Yeah. And if we are looking for something extra, it's only to support what you've already sent in. So whatever you sent in might not be a strong enough document or, you know, it. it um, and, and we're just trying to help and support to make as the three items that Maria's uh, outlined there under the legislative pieces. We're just trying to satisfy us legis on, on a legislation point of view. Have we got the right documents um, that uh, for the files? That That's it. It's not to inconvenience anybody. Um, mm. We are operating in a very tight regulated environment and how we open accounts is actually, it's actually where it's prescribed to us as a bank, how we mm. open accounts, um, what we can take. Perfect. Um, so there's just one more question I'll go back to and it's from Andrilla. So she said, will the bank statement of the applicant be acceptable as a proof of address? I just want to just make sure yeah. I haven't. Yeah. yeah, so that will be acceptable as proof of address if you go through the non-resident team because it's in your, uh, it's that is exactly ideal actually. 
because it's your proof of address in your home country. And if you're opening the account in your home country right now, that will be acceptable um, as proof of address. It's only if you come over here and try in and you use that, that won't work over here. No. So, like, if you're going to use your own bank statement in your home country, you need to open the account before you come over here. Yeah. And can I just ask, Adrila, there, is this uh, in English? Would we, does that to translate it? There is nothing coming through on the chat anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, okay. time anyway. So but if, is, if, yeah. in, just to clarify from, um, uh, just adding on to Maria's point there, if, if it isn't in English, we would have to have it professionally translated. So it, we can't accept it in the language that it's in if it's not translated because we don't know what the document is. Yeah, so you have to be able to understand what you're reading to, to, to exactly. verify yeah. the information. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But um, we can accept the statement, yeah. OK, perfect. Um, a question there from Lam. As I have accommodation in Ireland now, can I provide this address to you when I register online? You can. No, I. Right. That, sorry. No. Yeah, you, you see, I so all, all you would have at the moment, Lam, is, is a tenancy agreement and we can't make that. Yeah, it, they're being clamped down on. We'd have to really see the tenancy agreement. I, uh, to be honest, the reality is we probably wouldn't be able to use um, the Irish address until you get a utility bill there, because it is the utility bills that we are a letter from the government, uh, government department sent to that um, Irish address. Yeah. So if you want to open the account using the Irish address, um, you probably will need in all reality, you will need to wait until you get some official correspondence to the address. Now, that could mean just the electricity company contacting you to say that they're hooking up your electricity next week or something like that. It doesn't have to be an actual bill. It's hmm. just a, a document from a utility provider um, uh, or a government department addressed to yourself. Yeah. Um, but I uh, suppose because we have the relationship with UCC, we will accept the UCC letter once you have your email address and all of that set up with UCC. So you can go onto the UCC portal when you're here, upload your Irish address based on where, where your tenancy is for, and then the letter will spit out and we can use that um, as the proof of address also. Perfect. Yeah, there's I, definitely confusion about this piece. I do realise that it's actually a quite complex area. And to be fair, I completely understand all the questions coming through on it because it feels that sometimes what, what's acceptable one day isn't another day. You know, it can be a bit of a movable piece like that. But we'll work with whatever you have and um, try and, you know, see if we can make it work for you. Sorry, Natalie, I interrupted you there. You were going to no. say something there. Not at all. Um, so I we just have one more question from Hussein and then we'll wrap up as I'm really conscious yeah. that there was meant to be an hour and we've kept you for an hour and 22 minutes. That's, okay. <laughs> so That's no you. problem okay. at all. We're delighted okay. to have. But I think it just shows how complicated banking can be for international yeah. students. So this is so valuable. So thank you. No um, so from Hussein, the place I'm staying at will be covering utilities for the first year. How would it work in my case? I presume yeah, he means so, proof of address. <laughs> yeah, so the proof of address, the best option is the UCC letter because we it's 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 a proven method. We have in this long established relationship with UCC. Um, it's been gone through our assessment already and that's your w best way to go. When you're here. Perfect. When you're here. <laughs> when you're here. <laughs> Perfect. Brilliant. So I think we'll close here. Um, again, thank you so much. That was really, really valuable because I definitely didn't know a lot of the stuff. Um, so thank you. Um, You're welcome. So, so look, um, what we'll do is once we close off the meeting, the recording will be available in the chat. You can download it and just view it. And I'll send it on to you, Maria and Aileen, as well, in case you need to use it for future resources. Thank and I'll you. put it on the website for anybody who didn't make it, because we have a small group. I think there is about 14 people on the, on the chat, but we have thousands coming in. So I'll make sure, sure. it's posted everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> just to say as well, Natalie, and to thank you for giving us the opportunity. Um, it's an important relationship for us here in Bank of Ireland with UCC. We're important partners. And um, we really do want you to open your accounts yeah. with us. So we really would welcome you to Cork, to UCC and to Bank of Ireland. So we look forward to meeting you in due course and we hope to make it as easy as possible for you. And likewise,
regardless of what you decide to do with your banking, we wish you all the very best um, in your studies and in your time in Cork and really make the most of it because it's a fantastic city to live in. Great. Take care, guys. Thanks so Thank much. You. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very Bye. Much. Bye.